Hey everyone, welcome back. As I promised, I am back with this first video in the Jenkins Advanced series. So in the basic series, what we saw is, we saw a simple installation of Jenkins and then we saw the CI part which included GitHub, Sonar, JUnits, etc. And for the CD part, we saw how to build a WAR file and then deploy it on a Tomcat server. If you haven't watched that yet, just click on the top right corner so that you can check it out. So in this advanced series, what we are going to see is, we are going to explore Jenkins more with respect to real time scenarios. So to begin with, what we are going to see is the most important aspect, not only for Jenkins, but to any tool that we manage, which is security. In this video, we are going to see some of the best practices that we need to follow with respect to Jenkins security. This is Rajesh and you are watching. As this is advanced series, I have launched an EC2 instance on AWS and now I am running Jenkins on container. I have just followed the official documentation for running the Jenkins on Docker. You can also follow the same and it is more reliable because if you want to bring up Jenkins instantly on some other machine, all you have to do is pull the Docker image you have built here and spin up the container. I am not going to walk through the installation process. I will leave the link in the description below for you guys to go through. Okay, if we go to manage Jenkins, you will find the configure global security option and you can see for yourself what this section helps us to achieve. Security realm is what we need to focus on. As you can see, there are many options. Let me expand all of them so that we can have a look at what each of them does. Delegate to servlet container is for very old Jenkins version and it is safe to ignore it because most of us today are running Jenkins version 2.0 and above. Jenkins own database is the default choice selected here which will have all the user details stored in its own database. Keeping in mind that we want this video relevant to the real world scenario, let's check the Active Directory option. Most of the large organizations have a large database of user details and they prefer to use the same database for user management in Jenkins. Say an organization is using Active Directory service and then we can easily integrate it with Jenkins so that users of the organization can log into Jenkins with their same organization credentials. For that we need to install Active Directory plugin first and then configure it. You can find the plugin in the available section and uh, I'm going to restart Jenkins probably after the installation. Now we can see that Active Directory plugin has been installed and we can see the details of how to configure it by expanding the each section. I'm just going to show what fields needs to be filled by considering a domain called example.com. Domain controller is a server that runs Active Directory and uses data stored on Active Directory for authentication and authorization. Next, I'm entering the bind DN value. It's nothing but the part which is used in the multi-domain setup. As you can see that I am entering the comma separated values that is because of the directory tree structure. Your organization will have a different bind DN structure. 
Next, we have the bind DN password, which needs to be entered in order to connect to the LDAP service. After this step, we go into the bind DN tree structure, which we have entered in the above step, and look for the user information. And finally, for TLS configuration, we can select the JDK trust store because selecting all certs is not secure. And coming to cache, you can modify cache settings as per your requirement or you can leave it as defaults. After setting this up, users can use organization credentials to log into Jenkins. One advantage of this is if any user leaves your organization and if the user is removed from the active directory, then automatically Jenkins access is also revoked. In this way, it helps us in managing the users efficiently. Now, let's focus on authorization strategy. As we can see several options here, you can explore all of them one by one by yourselves. As we have not set up a valid Active Directory account, I am just going to use the Jenkins own database in this example to explain about how this authorization plugin helps us in delegating access. In order to do that, first we need to install the role based authorization strategy plugin and let me complete that. We can see that an extra option under authorization which is made available by our new plugin. I'll just save this and now we can see that under manage Jenkins we could see a new section of manage and assign roles appearing. Let's explore what's in there. Currently we can see that there is only one role that is admin role which has all permissions enabled. Now I am going to add three new roles which are developer, QA and operations and I am going to enable only read permissions and you can see that no other permissions are granted. going to create three new users like developer1, QA1 and operations1 who belong to their respective groups. Also I am going to create three new folders of the same name which contains respective jobs. The main objective behind this is developer should have access to only developer folder, QA to QA folder and operations to operations folder. By doing this, we can be sure that no other user can delete or modify the jobs that are present in the other team's folders. If this is not managed effectively, then we can encounter many issues as developers accidentally delete or even run the jobs that they were not supposed to. And this applies for QA and operations teams as well. going to create three new jobs just printing an output with a shell command.
as my user driver belongs to admin group he can see all the three folders and execute all the three jobs as well there is no restriction that is being implied to the admin now i am just enabling the sign up option so that i can create those three users which i have mentioned earlier and assign them a particular role Like I mentioned, I'm going to add developer one to the developer role, which has only overall read access. Now we can see that access denied permission is gone but still we couldn't see any jobs because we didn't add any other permissions related to the jobs that's the reason the developer one couldn't see any jobs Now let's do that. Now we can see that if I enable the job access developer 1 has now access to all three folders and even execute the jobs but that is not what we want item roles are the one which are going to help us in order to restrict the folder access for each user now i'm going to create the same three new roles again here in the item role section just an extra additional condition that the role can access the jobs matching a particular pattern in our case we are going to give the folder name as the pattern which is developer qa and support for this item role i have given all permissions required for the job that is create configure modify delete etc but you can deny giving delete permission here which will make sure that only admin has the delete access for the jobs which helps in securing your jenkins even better Now in assign roles, you can add these users again and select appropriate permissions, like for whichever group they belong. You have to just assign exact role for each of them. Also note that we can add groups to this role. So if we have actually configured the Active Directory, 
then we would have seen all the groups that is present in our active directory and we would have delegated all the permissions to the groups which will by default apply to all the users present under Let's log in as an operation user, and we can see that operations user is only able to see the operations folder and is able to execute the jobs under the folder. Just for the test purpose, now let's also try the QA user and see what happens there. And as expected, QA user is able to see only the QA folder and execute the jobs that is present. One thing I want to reiterate is that whatever the job name becomes like starting with any alphabets or numbers irrespective of them the developer will have a complete access to the developer folder because we entered the pattern to match the folder not for the jobs here you can even match the pattern for the job names as well case if you want to restrict jobs one last thing that i wanted to share before we wrap up about security is if we log into jenkins container see this jenkins home directory which is present inside the container and we can see the contents of this jenkins home directory which has config.xml and other config files related to the jobs and this entire directory is very important because this will help us in restoring the jenkins in case if the jenkins server goes down hence we have to make sure that only admin team and that too only very few people have access to this file and we don't want all of them messing around with this file in our road ahead we'll also see how to backup jenkins and then we'll cause a downtime for jenkins and restore it to exactly how it was so config.xml will help us in achieving that That's a wrap for this video. So in this video we covered some of the basic best practices that we need to follow for Jenkins in order to keep it secure. If you guys are aware of any other best practices just put it down in the comments below so that it reaches wider people. With that being said I'm signing off.